Welcome to another episode of the MMA Lockcast. I'm your host, MJ, aka MMA Lock of the Night, and on Twitter at MMA L O T N. I'm coming off a successful UFC Utica event where I went 2 0 for plus 6.12 units by cashing on Julio Arce over Daniel Tamor, as well as Ellenberger and Saunders not going to a decision. This week, I'm going to be tackling UFC 225, which goes down this Saturday, June 9th, from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and I can't fucking wait for that card. I'm kind of glad that I only have one event, or sorry, one bet for that card, so I can just sit back and chill, watch the rest of the event. Um, and yeah, man, I'm I'm freaking stoked. This is one of the probably the biggest event they have to date this year. Um, 226 should be a bit bigger, in my opinion, but whatever. Let's just enjoy 225 while we got it. Uh, last week, I kind of teased some surprise news that I'm going to be uh, dropping for you guys, uh, but that will probably be, be probably be pushed back till at least the end of the week, if not the beginning of next week. Um, I promise you guys, it's coming out. I will let you guys know ASAP, but I'm really excited for it, and I believe that you guys will enjoy all this new content that, content that I'm going to be providing you guys. So, uh, just a quick note before I jump into the quick picks. Uh, my boy Derek Love on Twitter um, let me know that it will be a little bit more, you know, informative and uh, a little bit better for the listeners to know my method of victory and round uh, for my quick picks. So I'll be sure to drop those uh, from uh, moving from you know moving from now on. Uh, I can't even speak right now. Moving forward from now, there we fucking go. Anyway, let's get into the card. Let me break this down for you guys as quickly as I can, just so you guys can get up on your day. So, kicking things off, I got Ige with a second round sub over Santiago. I got Guida decisioning Oliveira. Benavidez decisioning Pettis. Smith TKOing Evans in the first round. Coulter TKOing De La Rocha in the second round. Bektik decisioning Lamas. Gadella decisioning Esparza. Overeem first round KOing Blades. Uh, Jackson TKOing Punk in the second round, Arlovsky TKOing Tuivasa in the second round, and uh, that just moves us right into my lock of the night play, which is uh, Holly Holm at minus 164 uh, over uh, Megan Anderson, who I believe is in for a rough night. Uh, so let's start off with uh, Megan Anderson. You know, I, I looked through her last couple of fights. You know what? I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I watched all of her fights just to see the trend, uh, see her progression or lack thereof, if you want to call it that. Um, so, like, pretty much with the last fight with Charmaine Tweet, you know, she showed her stalking game plan, which is something that she's known for. She's always moving forward. She's very aggressive. Uh, but the thing I noticed in these fights, you know, she's she's not carrying her hands too high. Uh, her chin is the only thing that's really high <laughs> in this entire fight. Um, but she... She, she seems to throw her punches with not too much of an emphasis on them, you know, uh, in terms of an emphasis of getting them back to her face so that she can actually defend any counter strikes that are coming at her. Um, Tweet was able to tag her a couple of times, even kind of stumbled her a bit. So, you know, Megan is definitely there to be hit. And against a fighter like Holly Holm, that's the last thing you want to do. Um, Anderson's first punch, usually with almost any fighter, uh, is her hardest in the blitz that she has. But she always leaves her chin open, and that is the issue. She has never fought a fighter that counters as uh, crisply and sharply as Holm has. So I think that's where she's going to run into some troubles here. Uh, some strengths in terms of uh, Anderson, at least what she showed in the tweet fight, was you know when she is in the clinch, she's very strong. You know she can push, you know drive her forehead into your chin and into your chest, and and just push and keep you against the cage. Uh, and when she wants to, which I don't find she does often, she can deliver a lot of solid knees. So that's definitely something to look out for uh, in this fight. Uh, the thing that the te- tweet fight is, is as soon as she got busted open, she got hit with a good shot, her nose split open, started leaking blood. You could tell she was kind of finished at that point. You know, She may have thrown a couple of spinning back fists and all that stuff, but it, you could tell with her body language and the way that she was defending, she just wanted out of there at that point. In the Peggy Morgan fight, it was very cringeworthy to watch. You know, Peggy Morgan's uh, stand-up is very, very bad. No head movement. Just a perfect target for Megan and, you know, the power shots that Megan was throwing. Peggy was able to control Megan against the cage for about 45 seconds or so, but that was probably the most, uh, you know, dominant thing she did in that fight. Uh, Megan did look dominant as fuck, and, you know, but when you're fighting somebody like Peggy Morgan, you better fucking look, uh, you know, dominant. Um, the, I, I'm a big fan of TJ DeSantis if any of you guys know he's the producer for a bunch of podcasts and he's also the commentator for Invicta but man are they really like 
doing a disservice to casual MMA fans that might be watching Invicta saying how you know amazing Megan is I don't think she's the best but she does look like a world beater out there when she's going you know facing girls like Charmaine Tweed and Peggy Morgan so I have seen a lot of issues with uh you know uh, Megan Anderson's game and I think it's something that uh, Holly Holm can exploit you know Megan is a big 145er the one thing she has going for her is she is one of the only natural 145ers out there um, but she has the perfect you know style that plays into Holly Holm's game she's very hittable with her you know with her striking defense um, she does have a decent clinch game good knees when she wants um and one thing I kind of noticed is, like, when she throws, she doesn't really throw with the best technique. She she mainly just rotates her upper body. She doesn't, like, she rotates in, like, an, a, a robotic motion almost. It it, does, it seems like she could get more pop out of her punches if she kind of threw it with better technique. But she's kind of just rushing forward, winging these shots and hoping they land. Uh, and, you know, again, the girls that she has faced will wilt under things like that. Not Holly Holm, though. Moving on to Holly Holm, you know, she's coming off the toughest fight of her life. The toughest fight almost any woman could any woman could take against Cyborg, you know. She she ran into, into some heavy shots and her chin did hold up, which makes me confident in this fight with Megan, you know. If so, Holly's able to eat these shots that Cyborg is throwing at her, I don't see how, you know, Megan will be able to stop Holly Holm. Uh, Holly did a lot of good things in that fight, even though she, you know, she decided, you know, clearly lost pretty much five rounds to nothing. She did a lot of good job, good things to not get knocked out in terms of whenever she gets her back against the cage, she would either duck, uh, any of the come incoming shots from, uh, Cyborg. She'd clinch up and then push Cyborg against the cage and really show her physicality by pushing Cyborg against the cage and really controlling her with the double underhooks. If she wasn't ducking and clinching, she was doing a great job of pivoting and maneuvering out of the way, uh, when Cyborg was lunging in with some of those nasty, nasty hooks. Um, yeah, and, you know, the one thing that, one of the good things that Megan did show in her fights was that she was strong in the clinch. So I'd be very interested to see how this fight would go if it does get into a clinch battle. You know, both girls are very big, they're very strong, they're very muscular. So it will be interesting to see who can control that uh, aspect of the fight if it gets there. Uh, one thing I would like for Holly to kind of tighten up would be the uh, lunging in. You know, she... I think she was more so lunging in Cyborg because Cyborg is waiting too much. Um, I think I don't think Megan is going to be waiting as much. I think it's going to play right into Holly Holmes' counter striking game, and I think that she'll be able to land some big shots. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to list off a couple fights for you, and you guys can kind of get an idea of where I'm going with this. Tisha Torres against Juliana Lima. Uh, Mirbek Tysimov against Philippe Silva, John Lineker against Marlon Vera, Henry Suhudo against Sergio Perez, Kyung Ho Kang against Guido Canetti, Tai Tuivasa against Cyril Asker, Tatiana Suarez against Alexa Grasso, and Tom Breeze against Daniel Kelly. Add Holly motherfucking home and Megan Anderson to that list because those are all the fights that I have picked locked up, lock of the nights for and have felt probably the most confident I've ever felt out of all the picks that I've made. I left it off nine fights for you guys right there, Holly Holm being the 10th fight. But these are fights I just cannot see my guys losing, or my girls losing, I should say, um, other than a fluke one-punch KO or something like that. Even that, I don't think Megan has a proper technique to land a clean enough shot on Holly Holm to put her lights out. Um this is the first time Megan's fighting a real fighter. You know, even her freaking loss to Cindy Danua, that was embarrassing. Uh, and Cindy Danua is not even the be best fighter out there. She has great, she has a pretty good ground game, but that's about it. So with that said, I think Holly Holm wins a, you know, a TKO. She probably gets a TKO in the second round and uh, makes Megan, you know, stops that Megan hype train, which has all been built on social media because she posts some, you know, sexy pictures here and there. But, you know, she hasn't fought in a while and... She's kind of lucky that she's getting such a big fight with Holly Holm right off the bat in the UFC, but I think it's going to derail her, and uh, then, you know, nobody really going to be interested in seeing Cyborg against Megan Anderson. And just for just an FYI, I did see a line way back in the day when Megan and Cyborg was rumored that Cyborg would be at minus 500. My limit is minus 350. I would definitely bet uh, Cyborg at minus 500 minus 500 as chalk as that is that's probably the easiest bet you'll ever make in your goddamn life anyway holly Holm, second round tko over megan anderson let's move the fuck on i got rda fourth round sub over covington and whitaker round five tko 
that's pretty much a wrap on UFC 225. I'll come back uh, in about two weeks for UFC Singapore and talk to you guys then. Until then, good luck with your bets, and I'm gone.